Hi, my name is Ichban and today we're going to be talking about the histogram tool, how you can use it to nail your exposures and improve your photography. You may have noticed a little graph on the back screen of your camera or an editing program like Adobe Lightroom. That's the histogram. The histogram is a very powerful and useful tool in photography, both in shooting and editing. So what does it represent exactly? The histogram measures the brightness of your image in the form of a graph. What you see in the graph is a representation of what your camera sees in brightness. So as you can see in this example photo here, all the RGB and brightness values are represented in the histogram in Adobe Lightroom. So how exactly do you read a histogram and how is it useful? The horizontal axis of the histogram starts with blacks on the far left, moves to shadows, mid-tones, highlights, and the pure whites of your image. Reading the histogram, you can see in the graph that there's a lot of data on the left side, which is the shadow side, and also on the mid-tones and highlight side. This is representative of the image as the bottom half is the trees and the pagoda, which is all dark, and the top is the sky and Mount Fuji, which is the bright parts. Also notice how the graph never touches the far left or far right side, which is important, but we'll talk about this later. The histogram is a great reference tool to check the exposure, the contrast and the dynamic range of your image. Oftentimes I'm out shooting in bright daylight where it's difficult to see the back screen of your camera and judge if your shot's too bright or too dark. That's where the histogram comes in as I'm able to check what the camera actually sees and not have to rely on the back screen of the camera. The histogram is a great reference point for checking your exposures. All right, so I'm gonna run through some examples of how histograms look and what it means. When your graph is bunched up on the left side, which represents the blacks and the shadows of an image, it usually means that you have a darker underexposed image. This is fine if you're intentionally shooting a dark scene and you want your photograph to be dark. But if this is not the case, it may mean that you have underexposed your image. You can fix this by increasing the exposure to getting the graph a little more to the center. If the graph of your histogram is leaning heavily to the right, which indicates the white and highlights of your image, it usually means that you've overexposed the image or it's very bright. Again, this is fine if you're shooting a high key image, for example, or it could mean that your image is overexposed and you need to bump the exposure down to bring it back to a normal level. Another histogram scenario could be that your graph is squished tightly into the middle and is very narrow. This means that your image is low contrast. You can improve the contrast of your image if you have control over the environment, say with some lights, where you can improve the highlights and darken the shadows, which should stretch out your histogram graph to make it more balanced and spread out. This will improve the contrast of your image. Those are some quick ways on how to read your histogram and improve your photography. At a glance, you can check the exposure, the contrast, and dynamic range of the image that you're shooting, which will help you in the editing process a lot. A pro tip to help you in the editing process is to shoot RAW if your camera allows you to do so. Shooting in RAW allows your camera to capture all the data in uncompressed files. The file sizes are a lot larger than shooting JPEGs, but it'll give you more flexibility in the edit as there is more data to play with. With the RAW file, you're able to push the edit a lot further lifting shadows, for example, or saving highlights. So histograms are great for shooting. How are they useful in editing? You notice as I move these sliders, the histogram will change accordingly. Moving the exposure slider to the left to make the image darker, for example, will shift the histogram to the left, and doing the opposite will make it shift to the right. It's important to not let the graph touch either extreme sides the far left or the far right of the histogram. Looking at the histogram, you can see how it's bunched up to the right. What you don't want to do during the edit or the shooting phase is to see the histogram all bunched up and actually touching the far right side or the far left side like this. What this means is that you've actually pushed the exposure far too much and there's no information in the pure whites. Adobe Lightroom has a tool to help you combat this. If you see the two little triangles on the top corners of the histogram, you can click them or press J on your keyboard to turn them on. These are the clipping indicators. When the indicator is on, Adobe Lightroom will let you know by highlighting in red that your image is overexposed and you've lost information in the whites. The same will happen when you've underexposed the image and clipped the blacks. Adobe Lightroom will highlight the clipped blacks in blue, just like this. When this happens, it's a good idea to pull your edit back just a little bit. 
That's how to read and use histograms in your photography. As mentioned in this video, it's important to remember that the histogram is only a reference tool and shouldn't be used as a hard guide. Obviously, if you're shooting a darker scene, your histogram graph should be left heavy. Be mindful of what you're trying to achieve with your photograph and use the histogram as a quick reference tool that you can glance at to check your image. A pro tip for those of you who want to print your photographs is to check the histogram to make sure nothing's clipping in the shadows or the highlights as this will show up in the print. I hope you've learned something about histograms today and how to use them to improve your photography. My name's Ichiban, see ya.